Good morning Church, my name is Alini and I am part of the Young Adults team here at Audacious and it's my honour and privilege to bring, bring you today's devotion. So in our devotions we have been looking at our favourite Bible characters, so if you haven't seen any of those I highly encourage you to go back and watch them but today we're going to be looking at Elijah who is one of my favourite Bible characters. I have always loved Elijah the way he was just so bold in his request from God, the way he just went forth and wavering obedience, even when he was afraid, even when he didn't want to do it, and that has always resonated with me. But before we read from today's passage, I just want to catch you up on everything that he was up to up to this point. So, up to this point, Elijah had had a battle at Mount Carmel between God and him and him and um, Baal and their prophets and so obviously we won and that was epic and then Elijah had all 450 of the Baal prophets killed he then told Ahab King Ahab to take care of himself eat drink and all that good stuff he then went back to Mount Carmel and asked for rain he prayed for rain and he went back and forth and back and forth and he you know, fervently kept praying until eventually on the seventh try he saw a tiny cloud the size of a man's hand and and he warned Ahab of this and heavy rain came. He uh, ran home and outran Ahab's chariot. And this is where we left off um, when King Ahab goes back to Jezebel. So in First Kings 19 verse 1 to 8 we read when Ahab got home he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal so Jezebel sent this message to Elijah may the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them Elijah was afraid and fled for his life he went to Beersheba a town in Judah and he left his servant there then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors, who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel forty days and forty nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. I love this passage. And I don't know if you're familiar with that famous Snickers tagline, you're not you when you're hungry. And that often rings true in my life. But not only that, this becomes especially true when I am hungry and I am tired. I start acting very out of character. I don't have as much grace for people. I become quite dramatic. Everything is just a lot. Oh, just like Elijah in this passage, um, you know, Elijah was t like utterly exhausted despite doing everything that God had asked of him. He was still facing hardships and persecution and he was at his breaking point. He was at the end of himself. He was tired and hungry and he just had enough. And how often in life do we feel like that? In our walks with God, do we feel like we've done everything God has asked us to do yet? We feel drained and ready to give up and we're tired and exhausted and Elijah even compared himself to his ancestors feeling inadequate and how many times do we do that and compare ourselves to other people's walk with God and their walk in life and Elijah's actions here and his words in this passage were out of character for who he was um, and this is a sign that he was not himself and because he was hungry and he was tired and he, he just he needed an app and he needed some food and uh, so that's what he did he found a tree and God you know sent an angel and gave him food and he ate and then he slept and he ate again and he was ready to go and I believe this mirrors our walk with God that we need to come to him 
for our rest. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, it says, um, come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burden and I will give you rest. Jesus says those words because he knows that sometimes we carry heavy burdens and life gets a lot and we're so busy and we're tired and we're exhausted and we need rest. And so we need to come to him so that he can be the refreshment that we need for our spirit, that he can be the refuge to calm our anxious thoughts and our anxious minds and all the busy chaos of life. And then secondly, God's word is our sustenance. It is our fulfillment. It is the thing that nourishes us and fuels us for our journey and our walk with God. And when Elijah ate, it reminds us that we need to nourish ourselves on the word of God. We need to seek his word. We need to spend time with him. When Jesus himself was in the wilderness, he was tempted by the enemy. And this is what he said. In Matthew 4, 4, he responded with, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And how true is that for our lives? that we need to spend time in his word, that we need to live because it's not by bread alone. How many times does the Bible compare his word to bread, the bread of life? And we need to eat of this bread. We need to spend time reading and, and meditating on his word. And so I really want to encourage you today to remember that you're not you when you're hungry and when you're tired. You're not you when you've not spent time with God and rested in his presence. You're not you when you've not fed your spirit. You've not given your spirit the food that it needs, the nourishment that it needs. And so today, I want to encourage you to spend some time in his word, to bask in his presence, to really meditate on what God is saying and rest in him so that you have sustenance to go forward. Because you're not you when you're hungry, but you are the most you when you have spent time in his word and you are slowly becoming more like Christ. The more we become like Christ, the more we become like who we were truly meant to be because we were made in God's image. And so the more we become like him, the more we become like who we were designed to be. And so today take time to read God's word, to spend time in his presence. And when you've done that, do it a little more because just like the angel told Elijah that he needed to eat again, so that he would be able to handle the journey. You need to make sure that you are full to the brim of God's word so that when you go on your journey, you have enough sustenance to get through it. So I pray that over your life. I pray that this word encourages you and have a blessed rest of your day.